Hi Greedy 3Ders. Today is part two of the Fantastic Four build where we're going to be making this The Thing, old Ben Grimm, old Blue Eyes himself. I'll show you how I painted this one up. It's from the Sanix range and we're waiting for the other two eagerly. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video and you can see who won the competition for my 500 subscribers. And uh, don't forget, you need to subscribe to this channel, please, and uh, make a comment, make a like. Just spread the word. Let's get more people involved in our hobby and uh, stay tuned to the making of Ben Grimm, uh, The Thing. We're starting off with some matte black air primer from Army Painter and I'm going to give Mr Grimm here a coat of that all over. Now because we're going to be doing him with a dry brush orange over the top, the black is really important to coat him fully as that's going to show through. Now the thing has been printed on my Elegoo Saturn. He's been printed up to 125% of his normal size and uh, he's come out an absolute dream. Uh, that primer has now finished and I'm going to go on to his boots using the raw hide again from the army painter from the mega set the air set um, I'm gonna give his boots a coating all over these boots are gonna get quite a bit of work I quite like doing boots and I think you can put a lot of detail into them but I'm gonna give it this base layer first just applying it over the black and I'm not gonna cover it completely because I want some of the black to come through it's all about layering when you're painting to give it an effect and, and as I say there's gonna be more layers going on these boots um, the bulwark brown what a weird old name is going over the top of the base layer of brown and I'm just going to target certain areas of this like the top of his uh, shins and around the back of his heels I don't want to cover the whole thing in it so our time with the airbrush has come to an end on this model and we're going to move to the wet palette but I'm still going to use some of the air paints I'm using the molten orange and I'm going to use these dry brushes from the army paint and now dry brushing is a technique where you load your brush with really expensive paint and then rub most of it off onto a paper towel before applying just a smidgen of it to the model and dry brushing will sort of just touch the surface of the model really and it allows you to put very very fine very thin layers of paint on and have much more control over where the paint goes now on a model like uh, the thing obviously on his kind of uh, stony concretey body we just want to be touching the outside of that and shaping and defining the uh, the actual model itself and leaving the darker areas on the inside and dry brushing is ideal for that um, took me around about 30 to 35 minutes of, uh, of constant dry brushing to get him all over but that's the first effect done now obviously this isn't the last effect although that on its own it does look pretty good um, dry brushing again we use it in lots and lots of techniques I do suggest you have a go at it if you've never had a go at it before it really will pay you dividends in your modeling now while that's drying I'm just going to turn to the Griffin blue and use a nice big a paintbrush and I'm going to just give his legs a kind of undercoat if you like of this blue because I haven't undercoated him at this point now it's the same blue that I did use when I did the invisible woman and if you want to check that video out please do so have a look in my list and you'll find it um, uh, I want to try and keep them unified they are a team they are the fantastic four so I want to try and match some of the colors um, so I'm just going to give a layer across that big brush allows you to do it relatively quickly and, and a flat brush allows you to get into the edges around the boots as well and it just means a little bit less fiddling and uh, there's the blue layer on and now back to the thing himself and the lava orange is the next color in the color triad for the army painter sets there and I'm going to use a stippling technique this time on him um, just concentrating on the parts of his body where the the stony bits stick out if you imagine the light would catch things it would probably catch the outer areas more than the inner areas so darker on the inside lighter on the outside now the color triads from the army painter are great the colors all match and they add lighter and lighter shades each time um, there you go that's what he's looking like now and I'm, I'm really pleased with how he's coming along you can see the differences in color and shade and looking good right going on to a wash now from the army painter again this is a strong tone wash and I'm back on the boots now the way you would apply these washes they're really watery and they're really thin it's just literally get a nice big brush and lather them on there and what happens with washes 
is they fall into the recesses of the uh, of the thing that you're painting. Now we're not going to leave it like that. We're going to do a little bit more to it. We're going to use just a kitchen towel, and I'm going to dab off from the outer areas. So this will leave the inner areas nice and dark, and it will also allow the outer areas to lighten up a bit. And I'm going to take some leather brown and another layer on the boots here, using again that fantastic dry brushing technique that I love so much. I'm going to just dry brush that leather brown across the boots. Um, the boots in this model are quite significant because they're pronounced so I really want to work on them and I want to make them a bit of a, a showpiece really and by doing that I'm just giving it a few layers and making them interesting and if you've checked out some of my other models you know I do like doing boots back to the thing's body and the last of the colors the archangel red of the triad and again i'm just going to stipple over those high points uh, being a little bit more conservative with where i put this higher one now um, I, I just want to add to the different variances in shade now I've, I've i don't think an airbrush would do this very well i do think you need to dry brush because you need to keep that darker area dark and uh, and a dry brushing technique will allow you to do that and i think you'll agree just looking at what we can see at the moment he, he is looking really really nice and he's coming on as I'd, I'd hoped he would really just concentrate on his fingers and his upper areas and his muscles um, i'm going to use now on him one of the flesh washes exactly the same uh, set uh, the army painter washes and i'm just going to take this wash and this is like a reddy pinky wash and i'm going to lather it all over him and what this will do this will dampen down the orange just a little bit and it will also just strengthen the inner areas and add another and thankfully a final layer there to the thing's body so get it on there nice and thick use your use your uh, your towel again your kitchen roll to just dab off any excess and uh, that then when that's done that will be the thing's body done so we put a fair few layers on but um but i'm really pleased how he's turned up he looks uh, he looks like um well the thing Just taking some of the white now and moving on to the eyes. Be really careful with your eyes. We don't want to get that over your hard work time. Uh, look how long it's taken us to get to this point. We don't want to have a little slip and blodge it, a big white splodge on him. Uh, normally I do the eyes black first to give it like an eyeliner effect, but because he's got a really dark layer, I've gone straight in for the white and I've just mixed a hint of gray in with the white. Eyes aren't necessarily completely white. Taking that really small brush again and just need to work on the pupils. Now Sonix has kind of built into the model the uh, the eyes and, and built in where the eyes will be. I, I don't really like that. I like to put the eyes where I want to, but it's not a ground, uh, it's, not, it's not a deal breaker. It's not gonna break anything. So just have a look at where the markings are in the eyes. And in some ways it helps you because you know he's not gonna be boggle-eyed if you're following what's already down there. And, and just dolloping that black, keeping the white below it and trying to get a nice semicircle of it and once you've done that uh, I'm going to move on to the teeth now using some skeleton bone on his teeth all them cigars he smokes his teeth aren't going to be white they're going to have a little shade to them so I'm just going to gently pick the teeth out with that brush just to give a little bit of definition to each tooth and this was the fiddliest part uh, of the of the paint process so far making sure I don't get it all over his lips but anything I did get on the lips I just used a little bit of orange to touch it up and it looked absolutely fine Now his eyes are bright blue and I'm going to get some of this uh, blue from Army Painter, a nice bright blue, and I'm going to load the brush and I'm literally just going to really carefully dollop a circle in and I'm going to repeat it on the other eye, making sure I keep an outer black layer. So we'll have a blue iris with an outer black layer and uh, that's done. Once that's in and it's dry, I'm just going to drop a tiny drop of black in there. I don't think that's on video just to allow for the pupil. Um, back to wonderful, my favourite skeleton bone and another layer on the boots now, dry brushing that lighter layer across. Um, this is um, virtually going to be one of the last layers we do on the boots. Um, we might do a little bit more, but uh, this is the, the last of the major part of the work. Now, I didn't know what colour to do his laces. So I thought, you know, I'm going to have a little experiment here and I'm going to try the, um, the skeleton bone on the laces just to see what that looks like. So I loaded up my brush and I blobbed it on. And I, do you know what? I thought it came out really, really well. And it looks, it looks in contrast and it looks nice. And there's a dark layer from the wash underneath. So I went with this skeleton bone lace 
nice colour. And I'm really pleased with the end result. Again, these boots are quite, uh, quite pronounced, so I wanted to do a bit of work on them. Using some of the Army Painter Leather Brown now, I'm going to paint his belt. Now, I think on the reference picture, this was silver, but you know, I just didn't want it silver. I wanted it brown and it's, it's your model. You can do whatever you want with it. So I applied some of the uh, Army Painter Leather Brown, as I say, and uh, made the belt look belt colored. And I'm really pleased with the contrast on the blue. And I'm using some silver now just to paint the four emblem outline. Again, I think you could ad lib this as much as you want, but I just thought a silver would look quite nice on there. So uh, I took my time, I took a really small brush and I just shaped in the uh, the four emblem. And once that was done, I used the same paint, just a silver paint to do the buckle on his belt. And it added another layer of depth to it. And it, it sort of uh, really contrasts the brown really, really well. Using now uh, some of the ultramarine blue on a dry brush, I'm just going to exenuate some of the outer areas of his uniform. There's like outer layers of uh, material on his trousers and I just wanted to make them a little bit of a different colour. There's some on the front, there's some on the back. I just I think if your eye is interested in something and if it sees lots of colours, you'll be drawn to it. And I thought, well, you know, let's make it a different shade. Let's just make it uh, a little bit more interesting to look at. So a nice big dry brush, a dollop of ultramarine blue and um, they are done. Easy as that, wasn't hard at all. Now back to one of the washes onto his belt and just using a dark wash all over it. As you can see what happens straight away is the uh, the definition of the belt starts to look uh, more vivid and starts to fill out and the dark areas in a belt, a belt's not going to be clean and it, uh, yeah, that's the same technique again, bit of paper, dab off the excess and that is done. Just using the Griffin Blue and some white now, I'm just gonna br dry brush onto the trousers all across. And this effect really makes a difference. And this has brought the trousers to life. It's given them a little bit of age. It's given them a little bit of interest and a bit of depth. And uh, I'm sure you'll agree, it looks really, really nice. Final touches on the belt. Again, skeleton bone, we love skeleton bone, just to touch the edges up of the belt to make it look a little bit worn and a little bit textured. And that's done. And some white now on the uh, on the formidable four, and just take your time with this. Uh, a couple of layers of white was needed to make it show, and um, once we've got the what the fact the four's done, that's him all finished. Let's have a look at him. Now I'm really pleased how he's come out. Uh, don't forget, if you want to buy any of the products that you've seen today, I am an Amazon affiliate and you can buy them through the links in the description and a little bit will go back to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed the making and I hope you enjoy Mr. Grimm here. And congratulations to Mark, aka Naughty Mark 73, who's won the Wolverine competition for the 500 subscribers to Greedy3D. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your ongoing support and congratulations.